so today's topic is how to create your first smart contract in RSK using Remix and MetaMask. So if you are familiar with Ethereum dev tools, you might have heard of uh, Remix and MetaMask uh, before. And if you haven't, that's okay, because we're going to be doing uh, everything like from a very basic level. So I'm Brendan, and I work as a developer advocate at RSK. And um, I'm from Singapore. I'm a JavaScript and Node.js developer. Um, I also run this thing called uh, DApps Development Club um, in Singapore. And you can go check it out for like a, like a list of tutorials and materials on developing smart contracts and DApps. Um, I'm also currently learning Spanish uh, on account of working for RSK. Uh, most people there are native Spanish speakers. so on my journey. Um, all right, so here's an overview of what we're gonna learn today. Um, talk a little bit about RSK. Uh, what is Solidity? What is MetaMask? Elements of a smart contract. How to connect to RSK and creating a smart contract and deploying it. So the last, the last two um, points, connecting to RSK and create a smart contract, that will be the main thing that we do today. Uh, that will be uh, a hands-on demonstration and you're welcome to follow along if you like. So um, RSK is uh, smart Bitcoin. So you take the power of Bitcoin and you add smart contracts on top of it. That's the idea. So uh, it is based on the Bitcoin blockchain, right? And then there is a, uh, a two-way peg. So any transactions that happen on the RSK blockchain, they also get merged mined into the Bitcoin blockchain and hence it's uh, secured in that way uh, instead of being secured on its own blockchain itself. So the proof of work is done on Bitcoin. Um, so this opens up like um, the possibility for smart contracts that are much more secure. Yep. And the goal is to add more functionality to the Bitcoin ecosystem. So I mentioned smart contracts. We're also having in, uh, near instant payments and also high scalability. Um, and the benefits for uh, users are of, of RSK is that you can use Solidity and uh, smart contracts because it is fully compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine and it is faster um, than existing networks. Um, and the gas fees as well tend to be lower. Yeah. So next up we have MetaMask. Uh, MetaMask is a tool and you'll see this in action later on. Um, it's a browser extension. Uh, you install it in your browser and it allows you to operate a cryptocurrency wallet uh, in your browser that is sandboxed from the web page that web pages that you're visiting. So you don't have to expose your private keys um, and, and therefore have a security risk um, to, to your front-end application. You can keep that uh, separate and it, and it also has um, all the other features of a cryptocurrency wallet, a standard cryptocurrency wallet. So what happens is your browser uh, says, hey, I want to do a transaction on a, uh, like on a blockchain. Then it goes to MetaMask and then MetaMask interacts with the blockchain. So in this case, we'll be interacting with RSK, which of course, um, behind the scenes, interacts with Bitcoin. Um, and then uh, whatever the result of the transaction is, it's communicated back through MetaMask, and then uh, MetaMask uh, talks to back to the browser. This arrow here is actually something called Web3, uh, but we'll get to that later. Um, okay, so what is, uh, what is a smart contract? Um, it has, it has many different things in it uh, that comprise it. So it has an address, right? And that's like the smart contract's username on the network. Um, actually, uh, that's your own username uh, and it's used by a smart contract. You also have a private key, which are used to sign transactions and you must keep it secret. The address is derived from the private key. Um, each time you sign a transaction and it gets added to the blockchain, it changes the state on the network. Um, so in a pure cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, all transactions are transfers of a unit of currency, for example, a Bitcoin, to, from one user to another. 
However, in the case of RSK, uh, a transaction is not only uh, for use for transfers of value, but also for interacting with smart contracts. So that means altering uh, data that is particular to a smart contract. Um, all right. And so the native crypto, the, the native currency of uh, the RSK network is something called RBTC. And uh, if you're on the uh, RSK testnet, you have testnet RBTC or TRBTC. Um, when you interact with a smart contract, there is a cost um, in computational, uh, a computational cost. So the computers, the nodes that are running RSK, they have to process the transaction um, with the CPU cycles. They also have to potentially store some data. And so this isn't free. You have to compensate uh, the computers that are doing it. And so um, you have to pay a gas cost, which is denominated in the, in the currency for that network. Um, and that ultimately uh, ends up with the miners. But that's not, uh, that's a different topic altogether, but it's just good to know this as a background um, for, um, for what we're going to be doing next. Um, there are two kinds of accounts. So the externally owned account is one where you have a private key um, and an address. And so this is <coughs> when you interact with a smart contract via MetaMask, or any other wallet that is an externally owned account. But then the other type of account is a contract account. Um, so smart contracts have an address, but they don't have a private key. They simply are um, autonomous. So when you interact with a smart contract, whatever uh, code is stored in that smart contract and whatever data is stored in that smart contract will determine how it behaves. There is no need for a smart contract to um, sign any transactions and hence they don't need private keys. Um, yeah. So that's, that's uh, I guess, a brief intro to the RSK network as well as smart contracts. Now, how do you create a smart contract? Um, it is the, uh, we use a language and a, and a compiler called uh, Solidity and the compiler is called Solid, uh, SolC, S-O-L-C. Um, and you can see, uh, I guess, the different specifications uh, or categorizations of the language here. Um, on the screen. Um, the important thing to note is that if you have used um, a language like JavaScript before, um, Solidity is going to uh, feel very familiar. Um, and the other key point is that um, when you write a smart contract in Solidity and you compile it, it uh, you can run, uh, when you compile it, it compiles into bytecode and that bytecode, um, oh, and it also outputs something called an ABI. You take these two things, and if you uh, put that on RSK, it, it will run. If you put those on um, Ethereum, it will also run because Ethereum uh, is a virtual machine and RSK is a virtual machine are compatible at the bytecode level. All right, so um, we'll, we'll not spend too much time uh, delving into Solidity but, um, as a language, but we'll just go over a few key things. So. Uh, unlike JavaScript, Solidity is statically typed. So a compiler will check the types um, before your program is even allowed to run. So a few things that you'll see are booleans, integers, addresses, um, and then you've got more complex types like uh, structs and mappings and arrays. So um, most of them should be familiar uh, from other programming languages, but uh, maybe address is something new. Um, you can think of this as just like a hexadecimal type. Um, yeah. So in Solidity, it's a contract-oriented language, um, as well as being object-oriented. So you can think of a contract as analogous to a class in, uh, in an object-oriented language. Um, and it includes both data and methods. So the data are like your variables, um, your instance variables in the class, and the methods are like the functions of that class. However, um, it is not that common to instantiate multiple copies of the contract, although you, of, of the same contract, although you can. Um, but we won't get into that today. So this uh, code at the bottom, that's uh, the syntax um, for, for a contract. Um, and the, this comment here indicates um, uh, 
where the rest of the contract uh, code needs to go. So here we've added uh, a contract, uh, some variables to the contract. So one called name, one called total supply. Um, yeah. um, you can see that this is a string and then there's a visibility modifier, meaning it's public. This one is a Boolean and it has a visibility modifier private. You can optionally um, set the initial values um, here, or you can do that in the constructor as well. Um, I mentioned visibility modifiers. There are a few of them. Um, what, what they are significant for is that whether a smart contract uh, exposes it uh, to someone else or to itself um, and so on. So we won't go into the details because um, this is a, intended to be a very basic introduction to smart contracts, but I'll just leave them up on the screen for a few seconds. Yep. So in this example today that we'll be going through, um, we'll only be dealing with public, um, which is the default. Yep. All right. So the next thing is that we have a constructor, um, which is run when the smart contract is created. So um, when a smart contract is deployed, right, it immediately executes this uh, special function called constructor. And whatever you do in that constructor will set the initial state. And all of that is done in the same transaction as the deployment. Um, and this is very interesting from a bytecode point of view because you'll notice that a Solidity compiler would have both um, a compiled bytecode and a deployed bytecode. And the difference between the two is because, uh, is because of whatever the constructor does. Right, um, yeah, and if you want to do anything on the smart contract, you need to call a function. So um, this is a very simple function, which uh, simply returns a Boolean value but later on we'll see some functions that do something a bit more useful. All right, so right now uh, we'll, we'll be using something called Remix. Remix is an in-browser IDE uh, or uh, integrated development environment. So it has everything that you would do uh, like on your desktop computer with a code editor and a compiler and you know, a command line. It's all integrated into one. Um, and it's a very useful tool for experimenting um, and discovering, um, I guess, uh, smart contracts. And the good thing about RSK's compatibility uh, on, at the bytecode level is that uh, Ethereum dev tools such as Remix work just perfectly out of the box uh, with, uh, together with RSK. Yeah, so at this moment, I'd like you to um, we're, we're about to start the, uh, the live demonstration and you are welcome to follow along. Um, what I'll do is I'll copy this um, URL and put it inside the chat room. Now, let's see if I can do that. Okay, so I uh, put in the URL there and what that will show you is a page like this, right? Um, so here, are the, this, is, this is the URL for the slides. So it will show you this so you can take a look. Hey, um, Brendan, can you share your screen, please? Oh, sorry. Um, Thank you so much. Share screen. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so that URL that I just pasted will take you to a screen that looks like this, and you know it'll give you all the links that are required um, to follow along yourself. So um, the slides link, basically what you've just seen earlier on, the tutorial article will take you to something um, that looks like this, which is a you know a written form of the uh, of the demonstration that you'll see today. Um, yeah, and then here are other links that we'll be using during the demonstration itself. Um, at this point, um, if you have any questions, please just uh, pop them into the chat and I will uh, get to them as soon as I can. Sounds good? All right, so um, let's go, it's uh, hands-on time. All right. 
All right, so what I have here is a new uh, freshly installed copy of Chrome. And what I'd like you to do is to go to metamaster.io. So you'll see this link over here. Just uh, click on it um, and it'll bring you to MetaMask. Is that, um, and then we click on download and that will bring you to this, select Chrome and then install MetaMask for Chrome. Now, um, there are a lot of fake MetaMask plugins floating around out there. So it's worthwhile just taking a quick look at this um, ID string at the end of the URL and making sure that it matches with the one that I've got here. Because, you know, in case someone's doing a phishing attack or something and sends you the link for MetaMask extension, it tends to be a fake one, um, then, you know, you know that it's wrong. So if it starts with these few letters and ends with those few letters, then you know it's the right one. Um, quite useful to do, to, to do that check um, because you are talking about a wallet software here. Next thing you do is add to Chrome. You'll get this pop up and you press add extension and then you'll get that. So say, welcome to MetaMask, right? I'm just gonna drag that tab across so that we preserve the order, close that. And so I'll press get started. So what I'll do now is I'll press, uh, no, I already have a seed phrase, right? Um, and then I'll create a new seed phrase. So let's do this. Um, if you're following along, import wallet. And this is just a notification. Um, the main thing to, to, to take note of is that it does send some information back to a server of some sort, but it's anonymized. Press I agree, and then you'll get to this uh, screen of, for import account with seed phrase. Now, what I'd like you to do next is go to this URL uh, over here uh, for bit 39, it's emcoleman.io slash bit 39, and you'll have uh, this mnemonic code converter. Now, this is, a, this is a useful tool for many other reasons, but for now, we're just gonna use it for a very simple thing, which is to generate a 12 word mnemonic so you select 12 from the drop down, drop down and you press generate, right? And you, you do this, right? And that's all you care about at the moment. Um, there's a lot more to this tool, um, but we're not gonna get into it, right? So copy this and paste it somewhere so that you don't lose it um, into any like text editor that you feel like. So I'm just gonna put, paste it into my Visual Studio uh, VS Code IDE here, right? Now, um, just a side note, you should never share this with anyone, right? Because that can be used to regenerate your uh, cryptocurrency wallets. No password, no reset, you know, no refunds, nothing, right? So that's like the disclaimer. Now, in this case, I am going to be using a uh, test um, cryptocurrency. So there's no value in, inside of this uh, network here. Uh, inside this wallet here. So that's why I'm okay with sharing it, right? Um, but in theory, anyone who has this thing, the, this, this text here, um, is able to steal all the funds inside this wallet. So do not share it uh, um, with anyone, you know, um, if you are storing real value in it. So let's go back to MetaMask now and paste the same seed phrase that you have earlier and create a password. So it can be anything. This password is basically used to encrypt uh, the, this value when it's stored on your computer. So it's not stored in plain text for security reasons. Click that checkbox and press import. Congratulations. Um, please read this. Um, and essentially it's giving you a similar, uh, some warnings about um, how to use a MetaMask safely. And the main thing is if you forget this, right? then you lose all of your funds, um, technically. So, and there's no way to reset password or anything like that. So press all done when you're ready. And so what will happen is you'll get to this default screen. You'll have an Ethereum address at this point because this is not, um, this is not yet RSK. You'll see Ether um, and an equivalent value in USD and you should have zero because you just generated a new account. Um, 
And the significant thing here is that you have uh, several accounts, but you are, these accounts are not, they're on Ethereum, right? So what you wanna do next is to go to custom RPC over here. And this is, this is the part where uh, we're using MetaMask to talk to a, a network that's not Ethereum. In this case, we're talking to RSK. So um, what I'm gonna do is to scroll down further on this, um, this page with all the details. And I just need you to copy um, stuff from here on, on this um, section into this section here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Network name, RSK testnet. Um, RPC URL is public node testnet RSK ho. Um, chain ID is 31. This is important because this is what uh, tells um, MetaMask that we are connecting to something other than the Ethereum mainnet. Um, the symbol is TRBTC or Testnet Smart Bitcoin. Um, and the Block Explorer URL is um, Explorer Testnet RSK code. So just make sure that all of the values are correct. There's no typos or anything. Um, if you copy paste, there shouldn't be any. And then you press save. And so what will happen now is you'll notice that the very quickly there was a little spinner that was spinning around that was it testing that it could actually connect to this URL and, and have this config work. And it also created this new entry here called RSK testnet. Now, if you click on X, right, you'll see you come back to the main screen and you have RSK testnet over here, right, which you should be connected to. Now, now you have an account with uh, zero testnet RBTC and you also have an address. So what we're gonna do with this address is we're just gonna click copy, right? And in my case, just, just for your reference, I'm gonna put my address here, right? So you can see what it looks like. Um, and I'll put it here as well. So in your, um, in your text editor, you can paste your own thing here. If you feel comfortable, you know, feel free to put um, your address here. So this is not your uh, private key. Um, this is your public key or not, not your public key, but your address. So you are free to send it to whoever you please. It's, uh, it's not meant to be a secret. That's why it's called, uh, that, that's why it's uh, your address. Okay, so in fact, if you want people to send money, um, uh, send any uh, cryptocurrency to you, then you will need to give them your address. Likewise, if you interact with a smart contract, um, your address will be recorded in the blockchain permanently. So it's, it's something that is totally cool to, to share around. Okay, so now we have this address, right? What we're gonna do next is we're gonna open up um, a faucet, right? So we'll copy this URL here and we'll open up the RBTC faucet. Um, actually, wasn't it meant to be, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's faucet.testnet.rsk.co. Oh, it redirects. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this URL is correct. Go to faucet.rsk.co. Sorry. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to copy your address that you got in MetaMask and you paste it here. And then uh, just to prove that you're not like some sort of a bot, you have to, let's see. I can't tell if that's a capital K, uh, V or a lowercase V. I'm going to reload capture. <laughs> These are hard. Okay, this one looks like I could do it. J, W, G, capital S maybe. Um, all right. So then you have to wait for the transaction to be mined in which your address gets some, um, some testnet RBTCs. So just wait for that spinner to finish spinning.
and success. So a transaction of uh, the time to mine a block in RSK uh, averages to roughly 30 seconds. So that's how long it takes for, uh, on average, for transaction to go through. So um, what I'd like you to do is to actually verify this transaction in another way other than just on this website. So if you, uh, this hyperlink here for transaction hash actually takes you to the testnet explorer particular to that transaction. And what you should see um, is a page that looks like this. So this from address is the RSK address for the faucet, which is what's operated by this website. And the to address over here should match your, um, your address. See, so you can see that that matches that, um, which is the account that is currently being operated uh, in MetaMask. And this is the amount that we've got. This is um, half of a tenth of a full uh, RBTC, so one twentieth of a of a smart Bitcoin, and it was mined two minutes ago. Um, and you'll see here at the bottom that the transaction has a like effectively a null input. So what this means is that we didn't send any data along with the transaction, um, and that's what distinguishes a currency transfer. Um, from a smart contract, um, you know, kind of thing where when you, when you call a smart contract, there will be some data sent along with the transaction and that data is used by the smart contract to determine uh, what function to call, what data to, what parameters to send to, the, to that function and so on and so forth. Um, right, so now we're done with that. We can go back to MetaMask and we can see that it's already updated. You can see that. It was zero previously, and now we have 1 20th of a uh, testnet RBTC. All right, so now moving on, um, we're going to go to remix. So the, uh, the ID is URL of that. If you click on that, you'll go to something that looks like this. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to just very quickly uh, do something called a simple storage smart contract. Um, and what that does is it allows you to set a value and read a value. That's it, right? Um, it doesn't do anything fancy like create a token or, you know, um, trace something, not, nothing advanced. Literally, here's a variable. I'm going to set the value and read the value. That's, that's all it does. And it's called a simple storage. Um, but it, but it has all the, the basics required to do a smart contract and interact with the blockchain. And that's, that's to, uh, the intent today. So to start off, we click on um, Solidity under Environments. Um, there's another language called Viper, but we're not going to cover that today. Um, click on Solidity, and then you'll see this uh, icon appear here over here. You can see the compiler. This means that we're going to be using Solidity 0.6.1. Um, and all the other things. Um, at this point, um, I recommend that you click on auto compile because that means that whenever you create a new, uh, whenever you up save your contract, it will automatically compile it for you and it'll uh, show you if there are any issues with it. Then we need to go to um, this tab over here called File Explorer. And we hit this uh, circle with a plus in it and that creates a new file that's called this simple storage.sol. The name of the file uh, isn't so important, but let's just um, standardize it. Um, you press OK, and you'll see this list over here. It has four uh, default contracts, which is just a remix thing. They, they give you those as examples. Um, but we're just going to go with this one over here, simple storage.sol, and ignore the rest. Now let's go back over to this um, to this pad over here and copy, starting from pragma all the way down to this um, squiggly bracket at the bottom. Copy that and paste it here. So now we've got a smart contract um, that is uh, sitting in our IDE, but um, but hasn't been deployed yet. So that's the next step. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this and it'll say that green tick there says compilation successful. If you didn't click on auto compile, you can manually do that if you like, and you'll just uh, compile it once more. Um, 
And before we do the next step, I'm just going to drag this console at the bottom up a bit so that we can read more of the text. So at the moment, we don't see much. This is just the default text that you see when you start with Remix. And now we're going to deploy the smart contract. So we're going to click on this thing here. This is like uh, the deployment tab, deploy and run transaction. Now, um, the important thing to note, right, is that Remix by default, um, it simulates the Ethereum virtual machine. And that's what um, this environment means. So when you see environment, JavaScript VM, that's the default. It means that it's not actually interacting with any blockchain. It's, it's, a, it's a fake blockchain, if you will. Um, so it has all the same APIs, response to the same JSON RPC calls, but it doesn't do um, anything further than that. It doesn't actually talk to the network. Now you have the option of selecting these other things. Now MetaMask, what it does is it injects something called, uh, injects a Web3 object. Um, Interesting. Why does it do that? Hmm. I was expecting um, a pop up saying I may have to reload the page. Okay, fine. What okay, happens? So that happens to you, you just have to reload the page. Sometimes there is not a pop up because you have MetaMask as a window. A totally windows you have yeah, yeah. I was expecting that window but neither, neither occurred okay so I'm gonna try that again go back to deployment and then select injected web3 okay there we go so I just needed to refresh the page okay so cool so we have metamask notification over here which is what I expected so when you click on injected web3 what it does is it attempt to talk to a web3 object which is just JavaScript a, a JavaScript thing uh, which uh, um, allows the in-browser JavaScript to interact with this browser plugin. So it's like the, the interface. Um, but before it does it for the first time, you have to whitelist this domain. So we're on remix.ethereum.org and what this dialog is saying is, hey MetaMask, I actually trust remix.ethereum.org. If you use MetaMask before on Remix, it'll, it'll skip this step, but if this is your first time, um, you'll get this dialog. So Let's press connect because we trust Remix. And now we're in. So now we have injected Web3. And after talking to the Web3 instance, it has worked out that we're on custom 31 network. And 31 is a chain ID that we input earlier in MetaMask when we configured um, the custom RPC, RSK testnet, that chain ID. That's where it's from. Um, and that's like some sort of uh, check that we should check. Um, this means that it's not connecting to Ethereum, but rather connecting to a, a different network, um, the one that we have just configured. Um, the account over here, 0 0.05 Ether, um, and this ID over here, that's, that should match um, this account one over here. So you can see it starts with 2A, ends with 247, all good, right? Now, uh, so now we are connected, but we haven't deployed. So next step is um, just ensure, we only have one contract, so just make sure that that's the one selected. If you have multiple contracts, then you will actually have to select which one. Then you press deploy. All right, so this pops up a MetaMask notification um, because we're asking what, what has happened is Remix has talked to Web3. Web3 has relayed um, a transaction into MetaMask and MetaMask says, okay, this transaction actually requires a signature, meaning that I need to use the private key, uh, which I'm not gonna share with Remix, but Remix is asking me, hey, use your private key to sign this transaction. And so uh, it needs your permission to sign. So Remix is exposing this uh, user interface saying, hey, do you actually wanna sign this transaction? It says the contract deployment, okay. Um, and the data is this. And if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you can copy this hexadecimal data and you can verify it against the uh, compiled um, a smart contract if you wanted to. So you can copy and paste that into a buffer and then later on go and check. So you have two options really. Um, you can either, sorry, you can either um, accept or reject. So I'm gonna, sorry, confirm or reject. I'm gonna confirm this. Right, 
And then it says accretion of simple storage pending and fingers crossed um, everything works. We should just um, wait for about 30 seconds and, um, and this should be deployed. Um, the other thing you can do here is you can click on MetaMask and you can see contract deploy is pending. If you have any questions at this point, um, feel free to ask them in the chat. And bingo. Okay, so you can see I have got a notification from Chrome over here, uh, a pop-up saying con confirm transaction. Uh, view an etherscan, um, and if you click that, it'll actually open up etherscan.io. Um, but what we're, what we're going to do instead of doing that is going to this. So, and we just replace etherscan.io, delete that, and paste that. There we go. So. Um, yeah, so, so MetaMask like kind of defaults to Ethereum. So that's why we had to do that extra step. Um, technically speaking, I would consider that a bug because uh, in MetaMask because Block Explorer URL is specified here and for some reason it decided not to use it, but um, it's a minor inconvenience. So we can see our transaction here. Uh, that's the transaction hash, which you can think of as its ID from, which is this right over here, this address, uh, which should match your address over here. Um, which is the address that is being operated by MetaMask. Um, and what else is significant? Two contract created. So what that means is when you create a contract, you're not actually sending a transaction to an address. Um, uh, technically, technically, you're sending it to a null address, but uh, what it means is uh, it's like it's considered a special case and you're actually sending in this data. This data is your compiled bytecode uh, that was output by Solidity. And what that does is it says, okay, I'm going to run this and then I have a new contract at this address. So you can click on that. Um, I'm opening it in a new tab and you can see, hey, here's my contract, right? And you can have the bytecode. So um, this is something that we'll do, uh, we won't do in this particular thing, but we can actually press a verify contract as well if you want. But let's just go back to here and we can see that uh, this is our contract address. And this is a transaction it was created in. It was created approximately two minutes ago. And this contract doesn't contain any uh, RBTC. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so we've seen the contract being created. We've seen the transaction in which the contract was created. Um, so, so far, it looks like our deployment has been successful. Um, also note that this uh, section over here, it's a console. You can see the transaction that was created. I can click on this down arrow. And I can see um, within um, Remix, I can see all of the um, all of the uh, details um, that uh, that were created, and, and 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 you can check that those match these ones. So uh, it's up to you to do that. I'm not going to go uh, through all of that uh, now. So now that we've got a contract, um, we can interact with it, right? So let's uh, let's do that. So under deploy contracts, we have simple storage, right? Which matches this over here, this over here, this over here. And uh, you can actually check that the address here matches what we saw in uh, the smart contract over here. I'll stop jumping around now. Um, the first thing we'll do is we'll check its initial state. So let's press get, right? So when you press get, the return value, it says I've got a, a unsigned integer with a value of zero. And that's expected because when we created the smart contract, we did not initialize the value of stored data, right? So when we press get, um, it returns the value of stored data, which is uh, the default value of an integer, which happens to be zero. Um, so that's expected. Now, um, and you'll notice, uh, you'll notice something as well. Like when I press get, I interacted with the smart contract, but um, I did not get any, um, 
um, I did not get any notification or pop up from MetaMask at all. So that's because um, this get didn't need to actually um, talk to the blockchain, right? It can just do that as a local query without signing any transactions. Um, nothing needs to be uh, added to or modified um, whatsoever. No transactions needed to be signed to retrieve data. Um, however, right, you do need to do that um, when you modify data. So when you're changing the state of a smart contract, it means that you have to sign a transaction and add it to a block and the block needs to be mined. Um, so in order to do that, uh, you will see um, you will see a, a transaction uh, sign notification uh, asked for by MetaMask. So I'm just going to set a value of any number I feel like, and I press set, and there we go. So as expected, we get a MetaMask notification, and in this case, uh, we can see that our account is being uh, sending a message to this smart contract. Um, which matches the, the smart contract address that we saw earlier in the RSK Explorer. And we can see how much we're paying as a gas for a gas fee. So when, you, when we actually execute a uh, function on the smart contract, we need to pay for that. Um, and here's something interesting, right? So this time we see some data, but this data is, um, is, uh, is different. Like previously we saw the bytecode for the entire uh, smart contract, but here we actually see an interesting hexadecimal number. And if you really want to verify it, this is actually um, like an ID of the function. So uh, the RSK virtual machine takes this thing and it looks at the smart contract address and it says, okay, I'm going to convert this and somehow figure out that I'm, this is actually referencing the set function. Now, uh, I won't go into the details, but there is a, there is a way to convert um, this into this, right? And, uh, and the Solidity compiler does that, and the uh, RSK virtual machine also knows how to do that. Uh, same thing. And what this value is at the end, right, these, uh, th these bytes at the end, that's actually the hexadecimal value for the input, right? So here I did 1, 2, 3, 4. That is hexadecimal for one, two, three, four, just uh, converted from decimal base 10 to hexadecimal base 16. That's all it is. All right. So we're satisfied that this uh, transaction uh, looks okay, right? We are, everything is correct. And so we press confirm and that will sign the transaction and send it to the RSK network. And you'll see transaction uh, to simple storage dot set is pending. And we can look at MetaMask and we can see uh, contract interaction is pending. So we'll just have to wait for approximately 30 seconds for that to occur. I'm going to check if there's any questions. Cool. Okay, so oh, we missed that pop up um, uh, from uh, from uh, Chrome over there. There's a MetaMask uh, notification saying that we have transaction. Um, so let's take a look at that here. So we've got a transaction hash, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this URL, open it up in a new tab, right? So this was our deployment transaction, and then I'm going to go back to Remix. And I'm going to copy the transaction hash, pressing that clipboard uh, icon over there, and just delete the transaction hash and paste the new one. Okay, so now we've loaded up the uh, testnet, RSK testnet explorer uh, for the transaction that we just uh, interacted uh, with smart contract with. And we can see this is our address, matches that one, right? Uh, the a wallet address, and this is the smart contract address um, that we deployed earlier on. Um, this is how much uh, gas uh, gas fee that we paid for the privilege of a miner executing and storing our data. Um, and this is the input. So we will notice that uh, what we verified in the MetaMask transaction pop-up dialog there, that's the ID of the set function, and that is one, two, three, four in hexadecimal. So 
we can, um, so this means that this transaction has been mined and on the Explorer, we are able to see. So this is definitely on the blockchain. Um, that's, that's what we wanted to verify. So we collapse that and say, okay, that's great. I, ha I have uh, just stored some data on the blockchain, right? So this data is permanently there. It can never be erased, can never be deleted. It's, it's just there forever. Um, but how do I actually query it? So one way to query it is you can actually, uh, this is the super hard way, you can use the RSK Explorer and you can actually look inside the blocks and, and, and work out uh, what data is inside there. Um, and then there's another, there's another way where you can you know, jump on the command line and type in some JSON RPC commands and navigate to the block, find the smart contract, so on and so forth, and, and, and query state. But the easiest way um, and the most user-friendly way, and also the way that uh, D apps use, decentralized applications you know, that run in your browser or, or on a mobile app, the way that they interact with, a uh, with to, to get blockchain data is they use a, uh, a Web3 API, which we already have set up here within Remix. Um, and so let's press the get uh, thing. And so you notice that the previous time we called get, we got an unsigned integer with value of zero. This time when we press it, we're expecting a couple of things. We're expecting that we don't have any, um, there's gonna be no uh, pop-up from MetaMask. We're just gonna be able to query the data without the need to sign any transaction. And secondly, that this value is going to change. It's still gonna be an unsigned integer, but the value is going to be what we set earlier on. So let's do that. And there we go. It was instant. We didn't have to wait for anything because there was no transaction being signed. There was nothing. Um, it just got the value. This time I'm going to inspect this, um, the output uh, over here. And you can see this is a tra this transaction hash is, pre is uh, preceded with call. So that's you won't be able to see that on the Explorer. Um, it's just a local uh, transaction. Um, it wasn't signed. Um, this is the address that uh, called it, and this is uh, the function that was called, um, so on and so forth. And you can see that that's the output. So it says, I got one return value. Its type was uint256, and its value was 1234. That's all. So um, I guess that brings us to the end of the demonstration. Um, just a very quick recap on the demo part. Um, first, we installed MetaMask. Then we uh, generated a 12-word uh, mnemonic phrase. Then we use that to um, set up a MetaMask wallet, right, with a 12-word passphrase. Then we created a custom uh, network in which we configured MetaMask to, uh, instead of connecting to Ethereum, which is this one, we configured a new network called RSK Testnet with all of these details. Subsequently, we opened up Remix, we copy pasted a smart contract, um, a, a demonstration smart contract. Then we compiled it, then we deployed it. Um, and then when it was deployed, we took a look at um, the RSK uh, Explorer and verified that it was indeed deployed and it is publicly available on the blockchain. And then after that, we uh, interacted with the block, uh, blockchain. We did a get to query its initial state, we did a set, uh, that would actually interact with the blockchain with a signed transaction. And we also took a look at that signed transaction on RSK Explorer again. Um, and then we did a get uh, one more time after that in order to check um, what, uh, what actually did happen at the end of it, um, whether the, the data is queryable. And yeah, that was it. That's, that's, uh, that's the entire uh, demonstration. So, um, do we have any questions? Great talk, Brandon. It's so good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and uh, by the way, this is this is Sol. Um, this demonstration, the script for it and everything, was actually originally written by uh, Solange, and Solange, sorry. Um, and this tutorial, oh. um, uh, the, the is uh, is basically the written form of what you've just seen in the demonstration. So all of the stuff that we went through, if Maybe it was too fast. I don't know. Um, please leave a comment uh, in the chat box if it was. But um, if you want to follow along at your own pace, you can you can totally do that by going to this uh, to this uh, tutorial. And I believe 
the link for that is here. There we go. So we have something called a developer's portal um, and all of the material needed to get started developing an RSK is all there. Strongly encourage you to check it out and you can perhaps start with uh, this tutorial that uh, Sol um, wrote. Okay, so let's, um, let's wrap this up. So we just finished our, our hands-on. Do we have any questions in the chat? Sol? No, we don't have uh, any questions for now. Uh, Mike and Ivana and the freshman, freshman is started now. So you, I think you need to, uh, to see the video after. You, yeah, you are okay. yeah. Yes. so so we will be publishing the video for that was recorded um, in this in this session so don't worry if it was too fast and you missed something we can uh, we can do it you can watch it all over again and pause whenever you like um, you can you can reach out to us um, at, at any time as well um, uh, on the developer portal there's a link for uh, for uh, getting in touch with us um, and you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Dulce, who's uh, here, myself, and Solange. Um, we're, we're all uh, very happy to take uh, your questions at any time. Um, yeah, and that brings us to uh, the end of uh, today's workshop. I hope, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, that you uh, have seen, I guess, uh, like, that it is possible to have smart contracts on Bitcoin. And it is also possible to use, if you already are uh, familiar, you are, it's already possible to use the uh, tools that you're familiar with developing uh, on smart contracts and uh, with dApps, you're able to use the same tools um, with RSK. So hope you enjoyed the presentation. Yes, we have more uh, webinars uh, in our chat, we will uh, we'll put the link of the developers' webinars, and the, we have a lot of social social media. You can stay informed with us. Yeah, yeah. So this this is our webinars page. Um, yeah, go check it out. Um, I'll put the I'll put the link in into the uh, into this later on. Actually, I might have already. Nope, I'll put it in. Um, it's like that. It's just webinars. Okay. Um, did, did we receive any last minute questions? Okay. Well, bye everyone. Bye everyone. See you next week. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks, Brendan. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.